Okay, uh, I'm going to give a brief introduction to the AMD Radeon Open Compute Platform. I've talked to a number of you uh, during this conference and uh, a few times I've got the reaction from people who had no idea what it is, so uh, this is really just a brief introduction. Um, so here we have uh, basically an overview of the uh, Radeon Rockham uh, platform architecture on Linux. Uh, on the right, hand, sorry, your left hand side um, is what happens at compile time and on the right hand side we have what happens at runtime. Uh, so for computing at compile time, everything is compiled uh, ahead of time with the HCC compiler. It compiles CPU code and GPU code from the same source file um, uh, through LLVM compilers and puts everything into uh, fat binaries. And then at runtime, there's a language runtime that, that helps with loading the shaders, with uh, sending dis dispatches to the hardware. And then as you go down the stack, uh, we have the system runtime and uh, thunk and the kernel driver, and those are the components that my team is working on. Um, and on the KFD kernel driver, that's really where we're interacting with the uh, graphics driver people. Uh, so the uh, KFD kernel driver is right now merging into the AMD GPU kernel driver. And so then we're sharing the same hardware, we're sharing the same memory manager. Um, yeah, and that's really where I'm seeing most interactions with the graphics driver and where we are going to also work with the graphics driver guys on, on, and had, uh, on um, driving the memory manager uh, and, and other technology forward. Uh, so uh, I've been spending the last year or so uh, upstreaming uh, KFD. I mean, KFD has been around for a number of years. It supported the integrated GPUs um, with the HSA uh, um, heterogeneous systems architecture on APUs, so that's Kaveri and Carrizo that were supported. And so uh, since the 4.17 kernel, I've been adding support for discrete GPUs. So 4.17 added Fiji and Polaris support, 4.18 added Vega 10, uh, and 4.19 we have Raven Ridge, and in 4.20 right now the code is on its way uh, for Vega 20, which is the next generation GPU that's going to come out sometime next year, I believe. Uh, so the uh, distinguishing features of KFD um, that are kind of the reason why we have this separate driver, separate interface to a different user mode stack are user mode queues. So all the command submissions go directly to the firmware. They bypass any kernel command submission mechanism. Um, the memory management is very different because the applications basically assume that their memory is always available and they don't need any explicit um, buffer lists or anything uh, when they submit commands. Uh, we have multi-GPU memory mapping. That means uh, you allocate memory and you map it to multiple GPUs and it's available at the same virtual address on all the devices, including the GPUs and the CPUs. Um, we have device enumeration. So um, because we basically only have a single device file, um, we have different mechanisms for enumerating devices and, and figuring out uh, how they're connected to each other and some asynchronous event, asynchronous event uh, uh, delivery. Uh, there are some features that are not upstream yet. Um, so peer-to-peer -peer memory mapping, that there's still a little bit of work to do there. Uh, we have uh, also in our um, internal releases uh, support for importing and exporting DMA buffers for uh, graphics interop, so basically interoperability between compute and graphics APIs, and also for inter-process communication. Um, then we're working on supporting uh, debugging of applications on the GPUs, uh, compute applications. Um, and then there's RDMA, I put it in brackets because RDMA itself uh, requires some non-upstream changes in the uh, InfiniBand network driver, so that's not likely to be upstreamed anytime soon until there's some common solution worked out with, with the uh, network drivers. Um, so here we have a few of the uh, overview of the different programming models that we support with uh, Rockham. Um, so on the right you have OpenCL, that's the kind of the well-known uh, um, compute programming model that, that everybody uses on Linux right now. But we're also enabling um, single source programming similar to CUDA. And we actually have a portability layer that should make it 99% automatic to port CUDA code to, uh, to our architecture. Um, it's a C++ kernel language, C runtime language. Um, it's compile time compatible between AMD and NVIDIA, uh, not runtime compatible. And it's really useful for porting existing CUDA code uh, it's good for developers who are already familiar with CUDA and uh, 
also useful if you're starting an e-project that's supposed to run on both architectures. And then HIP is based on HCC, but you can use HCC without a HIP as well. Uh, currently, we're still supporting C++ AMP, but that's going away. And then there are other C++ dialects that we support. Um, also working on uh, new C++ 17 standards that add um, parallel programming features into the standard uh, language. Um, yeah. Uh, this is our machine learning stack based on Rockham. So at the bottom you see the, the programming models and the Rockham architecture that I showed before. And then on top of that we have a bunch of uh, math libraries and, and, uh, and helper libraries like MIOpen is kind of the AMD equivalent to QDNN. Uh, for, for uh, deep neural networks. And on top of that, we have, uh, we support a bunch of uh, machine learning frameworks. Uh, some of them are still in the works, for example, Cafe2 and PyTorch, we're working with Facebook right now on implementing those. And then on top of that, we can have machine learning apps running on AMD GPUs. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I have some links here for anyone who's looking at the slides online. Uh, so to the online documentation and release notes. And all the source code is available on GitHub um, and part of it upstream as we go along. Thank you. <laughs>